in our previous video we have seen how to set um sublist values from our say switch result to this particular sublist now in this video we will see how to retrieve the values which we put up in first name last name and in the email whatever we select and when we click submit button and how to retrieve all these values like first name last name and all those values so before we go and check how to retrieve all those values which we entered here so we have to understand what is happening whenever we click the submit button so in order to see that i'm going to navigate back to dashboard by clicking home dashboard and i'm going to click on function f12 and initially you may end up with elements page so i'm going to click on this network and make sure this is being selected or make sure this is being under record so now we're going to open our sweetlet freshly by navigating to list custom i'm going to click on test sl suite so our sweetlet has been displayed on the left left hand side i just scroll up on this particular network tab you can see the scriptlet.n and here we have response request headers and all those things so if i just see the request header it says the method as get and if you clearly notice the path the path which you can see in your browser url along with some script equal to 321 and deploy equal to 1 and all those details right and if you clearly notice the method is get now what we will do we'll try to enter some values on first name last name email and select few values and click on submit button and let's see what happens on this network and let's submit this page so i'm going to click on submit once i click submit you can see this page has been refreshed and if i just scroll up and you can see the scriptlet and even you can you note down your browser url browser url is like very plain it does not have that script or deploy which we we have seen before and if you notice the method is also post so in order to go in detail what is happening our page or what is this method get and post so going to go back to our netsuit i just scroll up we have an option called as server request so let's see what are the options available in this particular server request parameters so i'm going to search this particular server request in our help center again one time and on this server request right, there is an option called as server request object members here and we're going to click on this link so in the server request object members you can see the method this is like https method so in this form we can see there is a method post so let's try to use this particular property called as method server request dot method and we'll see what is the method which is going to log in our so i'm going to make use of request dot method i'm going to copy this and back to our code and i'm going to log it our script file has been loaded to our netsuit account we'll go back to netsuit account back to my script command and box now open this see by navigating to list come and else we let me close this uh, console right hand side now we our page has been loaded so by now our log should have come up so let me refresh this page so we can see the on request method which we are logged is now method and we just display the form so now let's fill up all the fields and check select few things from the sublist and submit one more time on this particular field list let me click submit button so the same thing has happened now let's go back to our script deployment i just click refresh So it has called get post this time when I click on the submit button. So the post method gets triggered when I click submit button on a particular page. So we're gonna handle that logic when whenever the get method gets triggered, we're gonna show this form which we have built. Let's add a if condition. Here. If the context dot this dot that is get method, we will use this form to. I'm gonna cut paste all the code which we have entered so far. So I'm gonna paste it inside the if condition. So on the else part, we know it is going to be post. That is the one which is get triggered here. And I'm gonna just add log dot debug. Okay. Else. Let's see what is the request triggered in else, and we know it's already been uh, pasted. Now let's upload this. Before we test this, you just notice this on the else section. We don't have any code. We just have log dot debug. So when we click that. Submit button. We know the post is the method which is getting triggered. So in this case, it will come to else part, and in else part, we just have one line of code. Let's see what happens. Now. 
let's go back to our netsuit account and test it one more time by opening this url so right now it would have triggered the get method so if i go to deployment and refresh you can see get has been triggered now let's fill up this form one more time now let's try to submit this now i have submitted this and if you clearly notice it is showing me a blank page so now let's go back to our account and the execution logs now we can see that on request method which got triggered is post and we can see the request triggered in else is also post so it has reached our else part and we don't have any code in the else part we just have logged out debug so we can see the logged out debug and we can see empty page here so displaying empty page we can display some form or even we can show some kind of uh, html pages so as of now we'll see how to retrieve the data which we just submitted in our form whichever the values we submitted here like first name last name and the data we selected or whatever it is we'll see how to get those values this else part so now let's see how to get or retrieve those values which we submitted in our form so in order to do that we're going to back our on request function we're going to copy this server request parameter called as server response or server so which is called as server request and we're going to check what are the options available again in our server request object members so in our server request object members we have this get line count get sublist value to retrieve the sublist details and sublist values and it also has other methods or properties like body files headers you can notice here there is a method also we have used that now and you can see there is another property called as parameters so here we going to make use of the server request dot parameters which will help us to retrieve the body level values and this get sublist value and get line count we going to make use of this apis to get these line level values like sublist values and so i'm going to make use of the server request dot parameters so for this api and we can see there is a lot of syntax they are provided context dot request dot parameters dot field id so we going to copy this value go back to our code the post sec we going to paste it here we have this context but context is not being defined so we are using this script context as a argument so i'm going to replace this context dot now request the parameters now there should be a name field so we're going to retrieve our field first field which we're going to retrieve is first name last name the email so i'm going to retrieve the first name so i'm going to copy the first name field id so i'm going to scroll up page where we added the field here we have added the field as the id as if so copy that field id and paste so in the same way we can retrieve all three values as of now i'm just going to get the first value so i'm going to log this value also the next step we have to retrieve values from our sublist so we have to loop through this sublist so we have to get the line count of the sublist and then we got to loop through and get all the values what we going to do is and we going to check so in our server request object we going to use this get line count a first get the line count which is number of lines so that we going to copy this line count okay and this accepts one of the parameter called group by sublist id so we going to copy line count api and here so we know what is a sublist id so just scroll up page where we added the list here we have the form dot add sublist the id is cust page underscore id paste it on this space store this line count in a variable let line we have the line count now we have to loop through that sublist so let's try to add a for loop first now we are looping into that sublist so once we loop we have to get all the sublist values so in order to get the sublist values we cannot make use of get sublist value if i just go back to my list we have the sublist api sublist value api so you know down get all the options available for the parameters like group where in the group we have to pass sublist id line line number and the name of the field you can know, copy the syntax go back to our and add this so it should not be server request here we already know it script context dot request or we should have renamed or we should have stored this value in like server request and use that particular variable so let's do it that way 
server request is now being defined here line count and gets a, a problem publish id we know this is the publish id the name of the field you have to get it here so id let's say we just retrieve the internal id the internal id of the transaction particular field let's try to retrieve only that field so i'm going to place that value and here we have to pass the line number so we know we are already in the loop I add this line number as high of that coding let me make it as high and let's store this value where we'll try to log this also log that id in my for loop let's log this id now let's upload this code to our system now let's go to our deployment and test our sweet rate fresh here we have the form so let's enter the first name last name and all those things. so now i have entered all the values submit now we have submitted we know it's a empty page because we don't have any code like form or html page to be written on the response as a response just have all this code by now it has should have executed all this line of code let's go to the terminal check i just refresh this we can see it has triggered get method and it has also triggered the post as went to this part first name value has been retrieved and also the transaction ready list value is also so but still our page looks very and does not have any data or information to so what we can do is on this else section either we can create our form and add some button for a back button to go back to the same page so let's try to add some kind of message like response dot right of hello world we can uh, received Okay. I'm gonna click submit now. Now we can see it displays data received, or we can even display the data which we received on this page. So after this, once we retrieve the data, it's up to us based on the requirement what we are supposed to on this data. Could have do it as per our requirement. In our next video, we will see what is backend suitlet. So far, the suitlet which we have seen is completely frontend suitlet. There is another suitlet called as backend suitlet.